Number 31. Draw the orbital diagram for carbon in CO2 showing how many carbon atom electrons are in each orbital. Okay. So whenever we want to draw an orbital diagram, there's a couple of things that we have to know, right? The first thing is what element do they want us to draw the orbital diagram for? And in this case, they want us to draw it for carbon. So whenever you're trying to draw an orbital diagram, uh, the first thing is, is we should get the electron configuration of carbon before it binds. Because when you're trying to draw an orbital diagram, you always want to show the electrons or the valence electrons before it binds and then after it binds. So if we just pull out a, a periodic table, this will kind of be like a review. What is the electron configuration for a carbon? The one that's just on the periodic table. No charge, no nothing. So on a periodic table, carbon is 1s2, and maybe I'll do this, 2s2, and 2p2. Remember, your valence electrons are coming from the outermost principal uh, energy shell, right, or energy, energy orbital. So the biggest numbers are your valence electrons. So that's why carbon has four valence electrons. So we'll put val electron. Okay, so let's just start our orbital diagram. Now in this case, what we're going to do is we're just going to show this in a little bit of a couple of steps, right? Basically what's happening is, and let me draw a straight line. That's beautiful. And I will draw an arrow. Basically you're showing what's happening as your energy is increasing. Now, technically we can draw all of our orbitals here, but only the valence are necessary because when you're trying to draw compounds, only the valence electrons are the ones that are binding. Now, as we're going from left to right, just know that you are increasing in energy. So a 1s orbital is less energy than a 2s, which is less energy than a 2p. So since we only care about valence, just know that I will start down low and maybe I will yeah, that's good enough. I'll start with my 2s, and then, remember, p's have three lines, because technically a p can have a total of six valence electrons. We only draw one line for the s's because there's only a max of two electrons for an s. And in this case, we have 2p2, so there's only going to be two electrons here, and two electrons here. So one two, and then one, two. Remember, kids on the school bus, right? If you have three total seats and one kid sits in this seat and the next kid's going to come come on uh, next and they're not friends, they're going to sit in their own seat. And then the next kid will sit in their own seat and then they will have to double back. So this is where we're at right now. And maybe if I can, I will draw these in red just to show you that, you know, red goes with red. So we have one, two, and then three, four. Okay, and just know that this is now unhybridized. This is what the uh, energy values were before the carbon was um, binding with oxygen. Now we're going to figure out what that is. So there's going to be a shift. There's going to be your hybridization. Well, the first thing is we have to know whether we are in SP world or we're in SP2 world or SP3. So in order to figure that out, we first have to draw the Lewis structure for CO2. So this will kind of be like a quick review. Lewis structures, right? We have a whole bunch of questions just learning how to draw the Lewis structure. So if you need extra guidance, we have that guys for you. Just find those on the channel. But this will be kind of like a quick review. We have carbon in the middle, surrounded by two oxygens for CO2, because least electronegative is in the middle, and ox uh, carbon is less electronegative than oxygen. And just like we said, carbon has four valence electrons, so one, two, three, four. If we look on the periodic table for oxygen, oxygen has six valence electrons, so six dots, one, two, three, four, five, six. 
dot to dot, just do it single bond for, for starters, just to get the feel as to whether you need a double bond or not. And in this case you do, because the oxygens have two, four, six, seven electrons. So they need help. So dot to dot again, and we have double bonds. And what is going on with this one? I put this one a little bit too close. Maybe this one a little bit too far away. And now we should have a beautiful double bond. And that's good enough. And now the oxygens are great. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. And the carbon is beautiful as well. Two, four, six, eight. So everybody has an octet. Okay. So now, since this is the Lewis structure, we just have to see what the hybridization is for the carbon. Now, tons of questions in this chapter deciding how to find a hybridization. Remember, there's sp, sp2, sp3, sp3d, and sp3d2 hybridizations. And remember, all you got to do is just count the total things that are around this carbon. Now, there's only two things that are around this carbon, because remember, we group together double bonds. So there's one double bond, that's one thing, and then there's another double bond, so that's two total things here, around the carbon. We're only talking about carbon. We don't care about these lone electrons, because this is not carbon, that's oxygen. So this carbon has two things. And remember, for the rules for hybridization, it's always two things, which accounts for two letters. So you say to yourself, which hybridization has only two letters in it? It's SP, right? One S, one P, that's a total of two letters. So this is the hybridization that's going to form when carbon gets shifted to, you know, hybridizing, meshing of your uh, S and P orbitals. So now we know that, okay, as I'm going up in energy again, and maybe I'll make that a little bit straighter. That's beautiful. We'll cut this down a little bit. And maybe I'll move this over here. We're still increasing in energy. But just know that now you're going to be drawing your hybrid orbitals. Not specifically the 2s, and technically I should have put that this was the 2p. But now you're going to be drawing your hybrid orbitals of just sp. Now, just to help us out a little bit more, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop this energy a little bit just to show you where your hybrid energies are. Now, your hybrid energies, and maybe I can just move this up a little bit, your hybrid energies, since they are a mix of the S and the P, your energy value should be in the middle between S's and P's. So if your S energy value is over here and your P energy value is over here, your SP should be somewhere in the middle. So I will draw the energy of SP maybe over here. But now the question is, for an SP, how many lines, right? Do I get two lines? Do I get three lines? Do I get four lines? This still goes back to the number of things. So always go back to the number of things, number of letters. Since you have two things, two letters, SP, you're only allowed two lines. So one, Okay, so we have SP. Maybe I'll draw this in blue. Actually, I'll draw this in black, but the electrons will be in blue. So I have SP, SP. And now, and maybe what I'll do for this one, just know that all these are 2Ps, right? 2P, 2P, 2P. But now, how many total lines were here? There was a total of four lines, right? One, two, three, four. So the number of lines that you had before has to equal the number of lines afterwards. But I have only two lines here, which means that how many P extra orbitals are there? There's two. So they stay exactly the same. So in this case, I'll have one line up here matching the P energy values because they didn't change. And maybe I'll just say P and P. If you want, you could say 2P because that's more specific. And now we're ready to put in our electrons. So we had four total electrons, and we're going to plug in our electrons here. It's still kids on the school bus. So you have one 
and 1, right? But now the question is, are we going to have 2 and 2, or are we going to go up? Well, remember, these are bonds, right? So technically, it's supposed to be oxygen's turn to fill in the other electron because we are binding now. So this extra space is not supposed to be the other electron for carbon. It's supposed to be the oxygen. And same thing goes for here. That's how you make a bond. That's how you share. So instead, it's not going to be one, two, three, four you're now going to be moving upward. So one, two, three, four. And when oxygen now comes in, oxygen has one electron, that will fill the bond. Another electron, that will fill the bond. And then oxygen has its own P electrons. And this now is the orbital diagram for carbon in specifically CO2. And we're showing all the carbon atom electrons in each orbital. So you have, whoop, so you have two electrons in your two sp orbitals, right? One sp, another sp. And then you have your two just p orbitals, specifically coming from your p, uh, your 2p. So we'll say this is now your hybridized carbon in sp orbitals. And that is it. That's the whole question. This drawing is your orbital diagram. And hopefully this makes sense. So uh, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Uh, you know, keep studying hard, keep working hard. You guys got this. Good luck on your tests and quizzes. And I will be talking to you all in later lessons. And if you wouldn't mind helping us out, please hit the subscribe button. And even better is to tell your friends or your classmates, and maybe they're your friends, right, too, um, about this channel. If we're helping you guys out, chances are we might be able to help them out as well. We also have physics and math videos on the channel at the moment, so free education for all, all right? I hope you have a great day, and let's keep working hard. I believe in you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.